Hi, I'm Alex. I want to welcome you to a, another video of mine on my channel. In this video, we are going to be having an unboxing of the Apple MacBook Pro 14 inch 2021. And uh, as you can see, I have got the box already on my table. It's It still has the tape from the store that I bought it from on it. I actually ordered it, that's why it comes in this box and not the Apple one. But I believe that makes for a bit of a longer unboxing experience as we get to take the inner box out of this one and unbox the actual device. As you might have read, I bought this from a store called Media Market. I think this, that was an, uh, a quite harsh pronunciation of the store name. Media Market. By the way, this is not an advertisement. Um, that's just one of the stores that's quite close to me. So I went on their website and ordered it. Originally I wanted to I wanted to buy it in person but they didn't have it in stock so they told me to order it. Ordered it, it arrived. So easy as that. Modern life as we know it. And as you might have noticed, we have a new microphone set up. We have a binaural rig, binaural stereo, whatever. We have a two microphone rig set up and I'm speaking into a small diaphragm condenser mic because, well, sorry for the popping, my body's doing the same thing it did in the last video. I do have multiple mics, like I said, um, not just the two I was talking in, in the last video, um, apart from the left and the right large diaphragm condensers. I do have, like I showed you just now, this small diaphragm condenser. I also have another dynamic microphone from Shure. Um, these microphones here, so the left and right and the small diaphragm are from Lewitt, by the way. L-E-W-I-T-T. -T. It's a, an Austrian microphone company. So I've got those microphones, I've got the Shure one, and I've got a wireless one that I used for some theater work. Um, maybe we'll come to that in a different video. But basically, this allows me to have a close-up voice in this microphone, and the unboxing sound effects in the microphone array that's basically looking down from your perspective, the camera perspective. So, we're already a couple of minutes into this video and we haven't even opened this first box yet. So, I guess we can do that. I have already prepared, prepared my little pouch of utensils. It's a leather pouch. I'm not sure if it's real leather. Could be. It has the name Shure on it, like the microphone that I just mentioned. Um, so I believe it was originally a Shure microphone transport box, uh, not box, but transport um, bag, which is supposed to protect the microphone. In this case, the microphone is stored away in the in a drawer, since I don't use it very often.
So let's take out what we need to unpack this. Listening to this zipper in those microphone arrays kind of reminded me of a cat's purr sound. So, as you can see, I've cut a pair of scissors here. They're a little dirty, I use them regularly to open stuff, so they have some tape on them. Let's put this away. By the way, <laughs> it's pretty hot in here, so if I ever make any, um, I guess, I almost said hot uh, breathing sounds, but sounds that you make when, when you get hot, when you're kind of overheating internally, maybe not, maybe not that, that's a bit too extreme, but if it's really warm, you might make some sounds like if you hear me doing that, I hope I'll cut it out. But you you will know what's going on since my tower computer on the right there on the right is uh, heating up the room like a big heater. Um yeah, and the window's closed so no sound comes in from the outside. But um that doesn't help the situation, it just gets warmer and warmer in this room. Anyway, let's get in, into this box and I'll tell you a bit more about why I bought this. As we can see, packing material. And that's going to be very noisy, so I think I'll turn the volume down for this part in which I'll take out the packing material out of the package, out of the box. Alright, as you might have noticed, I have skipped the packing material taking out part instead of turning it, turning it down because it was very loud and um, I don't want to deal with that um, dynamic material because it gets harsh very quick so I just skipped to this box laying here on the table. It's way smaller than the actual shipping box which is to be expected since a lot of the interior of the parcel is filled with packing material. So as we can see, we've got a warning or an information that this box contains, well, what could that mean? I mean, contains batteries. That is technically the case since the laptop contains a battery. So we've got uh, numbers to call in case you need additional information. Um, a certain number for North America and a certain number for international calls. I'm not quite sure what UN3481 mean, means, those letters and numbers, I'm not quite sure. Maybe it is a different, maybe it is a certain standard that might be, um, that you might need to uphold if you want to sell this device. I'm not quite sure. Maybe, maybe you can tell me in the comments. It boosts engagement. Anyway, so I see two tabs here. Let's see if there's anything else in this, uh, on this box. Nothing on the top. Actually, 
actually, I was lying. There was something on the top. There's more tabs. And, and there's a little pull opening ribby apart thingy. I'm not quite sure what that's called either. That's a very interesting invention, though. You just uh, rip it open along this line. Because there's two perforated pieces. And it just rips open. You can open the package. Very interesting. I see these this uh, technique on a lot of packages from a certain big um, um, big company that is also delivering stuff. Maybe not delivering stuff, but selling stuff. Um, they've got the same type of mechanism, I guess you might call it. But enough of that. Let's just open that up. I think I might either cut this part out or make it um, less harsh. I think I might cut it out, so you'll see. And indeed, I think I cut it out because it was very loud. So we already have a glimpse of the actual packaging of the MacBook. Let's just open it up very carefully. And there we go. There we go, that's the actual Apple packaging. It's actually on its head. So I'm seeing it um, as if it was the other way around. I'm not sure in which orientation you might watch this video. I might leave it in the way I see it um, myself. But uh, yeah, let's get rid of this remaining cardboard box. All my joints still pop. I'm very sorry if that annoys you. I can't do much against that, against not moving much. So, um, yeah, let's get rid of this box. And there we go. Smooth transition. Wow, smoothest transition you've ever seen. <laughs> I did that in a similar video once and uh, it was quite fun. But that's a different story. So, we've got the MacBook Pro packaging. Like I said, it's the MacBook Pro 14-inch 2021 model with the M1 processor. It's quite heavy, actually. You can see, MacBook Pro. Or if you want to read it from backwards, as I will, as I could do right now, Orb Cube Cam. That sounds kind of weird. Maybe because it is. text for you to be able to read it and uh, maybe censor a couple of um, serial numbers if there are any on here. I'll take a look at that in post. But let's zoom in. Okay, we are now zoomed in and focused on the text. I have just realized that you can see my two lamps in like approximately here and here. They're reflecting because they're shining from the top. It's actually the same lamps that I used for my first day smart video. So, what can we see from this? We can see it is a MacBook Pro 14 inch, model number, what did it say, A2442, I think? Yes, indeed. My eyesight is not the very best at this distance. Probably not a good sign, but well. We've got 16 gigabytes of unified memory. That means that the processor and the graphics unit, which is technically on the same chip, they share the same memory. So if the processor uses up 8 gigabytes for, let's say, open up, opening up a very heavy browser with many tabs open, like I like to do, Sometimes up to, oh god knows, what was my maximum, maximum amount of tabs open? It was a lot, you didn't, couldn't even see what was open. So if 8 gigabytes are used up by the processor, then the graphics unit 
has only eight gigabytes left, which is interesting. A 512 gigabyte SSD, so fast storage, and 512 gigabytes of it. This is actually the base model, as far as I'm concerned, I think at least, I think at least it's the base model. Since I took a look at the pricing, and in, you might know that generally Apple products are pretty expensive by by different standards, like comparing it to other laptops or other phones. They're pretty expensive. In this case, though, I managed to convince myself that it was somewhat worth it because of the specified M1, in this case M1 Pro chip, which is supposed to be very power efficient if you're doing everyday tasks, which is a very big point for me since my old laptop that I used up until now had an abysmal battery life if you only watched YouTube videos. So nothing else open, just the browser and a YouTube video open. It would last for four hours. Some people might say, well, that's at least something my laptop can hold up to two hours maximum, which is a point, but for what I need a laptop to be, four hours is just way too little, especially looking or like watching videos. It's, that's not really the usual workload. Usually I'd have more tabs open, I would have different programs from running at the same time, I might um, work on something, some music related stuff and everything, like all of that. All of that drains the battery even more, so the laptop, the old one, wouldn't last, wouldn't last three hours at, uh, usual, at the usual rate of usage. In this case, what Apple advertises is a battery runtime of up to, what was it, 17 hours? And that is measured, I believe they said, um, when watching a video or a movie on one of their uh, native apps, which uh, is an interesting benchmark, to be honest. But if it holds up 17 hours of watching a movie on native apps, then I can imagine it is enough, way enough, for me to use as a daily laptop. So that's reason number one. It holds up, it hold, like the battery holds up much for much longer, and I can work for, with it for a long time. The other reason is uh, the efficiency of the M1 processor in a different context. In this case, heat, heat dissipation. The more heat a processor produces, the less efficient it is. And the more heat a computer p produces, the warmer the room gets. You can see where I'm going with this. My current tower computer is heating the room up a lot. I think I measured up to like a hundred watts of power being drawn drawn from the wall under normal using conditions. So having a browser open and then having something running in the background as well. A hundred watts. In the case of this MacBook, apparently it uses a lot less. Laptops generally use a lot less. So let's not uh, leave that out of the question. But Mac, the Apple M1 chip seems to be so efficient that it's a good choice for my particular use case in this scenario. So it doesn't heat up my room as much as the tower computer does. And that makes sense, since if I only watch YouTube videos, I don't need all that power that the tower has with its crazy graphics card and like performant 
processor. I just don't need that. I just need a simple machine. In this case, maybe not so simple, but you get my point. Um, a machine that does the job that is power efficient, that holds up for a long time, and that still has enough power to basically put my tower computer out of um, work for a pretty decent amount of time, unless I want to like do high performance gaming or um, render complex videos and stuff like that, then I can fire it up and use it. But other than that, more power efficient um, and uh, less heat, approximately the same uh, processing power. Actually, I haven't measured it. So I might do a benchmark later and uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, so let's get into, the, get into this packaging. I could cut along here. And have basically a piece of foil that comes off like this. But I just noticed that I don't need to do this. I can just flip this thing on the side and use the tab here. I'm not sure how much of, you can, of that you can see, but I can use this tab. So I'm gonna pull this off, hope that everything goes okay. And um, yeah. Let's throw the foil away. We don't need that anymore. And let's put this back on the table. Alright, so it is in frame now. And I believe I will be having a lot of fun cutting this video or editing this video since there's a lot of scenes that I need to cut out or edit or adjust otherwise but that's the nature of an unboxing video in ASMR style, especially if the object is a bit larger, heavier, possibly. Right, let's lift the cover and see what's inside. Let's see if I got scanned or not. I hope not. Let's put this away. And we have the device right here, neatly packed into new foil. And I'm already noticing that my back is starting to hurt a little and I'm getting really hot. So let's get this over 
as quick as we can while still enjoying it. So, how am I supposed to get this out? Ah, Apple is smooth. <laughs> Very smooth. That's a, a thing that a friend of mine um, told me as a word. Smurt. S-M-U-R-T. Basically like a weird version of smart. That doesn't always have to mean that you are actually smart. Maybe you are actually kind of dumb. So you are smurt. Brilliant. So let's pull this tab and see what happens. Ah, oh, my lips out. Brilliant. Hmm. It's got quite some heft. I don't remember it being this hefty when I held it in the store. So let's put this aside for, for now. And now let's take a look at what we have in this box. We have what looks like Manuals. Let's get those out. Designed by Apple in California. Quite standard. Copyright 2021 Apple Incorporated. All rights reserved. And then some combination of number. This looks kind of beaten up already, not gonna lie. <laughs> There's some marks here. I don't know what that's from. Actually, I know what that's from. Charger power adapter. So let's put that aside as well. We have the power adapter. The how much how many watts does this have actually? That's interesting now. It has let me read. First let me take the foil off because that's gonna be easier to read. know what MagSafe is. MagSafe is basically a type of charger, or not charger, a type of cable that um, prevents your brand spanking new laptop of uh, being pulled from the desk in case you run across the cord if it's charging. How that is basically done is with magnets in the cable itself and in the charging port that hold the charger, that hold the cable in place. And if there's a tug, then the magnets kind of let loose because the 
the strength of the pull is higher than what the magnets can withstand. So they pull apart. And since this is a type of cable that just kind of lie and like lays in the charging port and doesn't like really like lock into anything or doesn't have an actual part that goes deep into the machine. It can like easily pop off. That was actually a fun sound. Um, I think I'm gonna make a couple of those ones. sound to make with your mouth. And I'm not quite sure why I did a left and right swiping motion across my small diaphragm condenser. It doesn't work uh, in binaural since this is a mono mic. So, smoothed me once again. So yeah, this is the MagSafe cable. MagSafe USB-C fitting to the power adapter. Let's put that to the side. Is there anything else in this box that we need to know about? Maybe a second? No, there isn't. <laughs> the box has gotten very light, and then unless I'm missing something, it certainly looks like this is everything in the box. So we're gonna put this away as well. And now, let's get the device itself. Oh, that's, yeah. It has some weight to it, let me tell you. And it has a tab that we pulled it out from earlier. And I think if you turn it over, it's something like this. <laughs> Careful not to drop it. Yeah, the pull tab actually terminates in the remaining paper. So let's pull that away. the paper kind of let go on its own. Alright, so I've got the machine itself here. Pretty sleek. I like it. It's got the Apple logo in a very almost mirror-like, I think. So either it is polished aluminum that's supposed to look like a mirror, or actually, now I notice I'm not quite sure if I know how mirrors are made. Might look into that. So basically we've got a mirrored Apple logo, and by mirrored I don't mean mirrored in a vertical or horizontal way, in, in the way we are looking at this right now it's flipped, because the machine is supposed to open towards the top of the video, so it's obviously flipped like that, but a um, mirrored mirror affected how can you say that um the apple logo has a kind of mirror effect going for it the rest of the surface is pretty matte but it's a type of semi-matte so it's not completely i mean depending on how you define matte right so it's still matte but it feels smooth like as if it was kind of semi-polished. So let's flip it over. And we've got in this case we can turn it around. We've got a MacBook Pro embossed into the actual chassis of the device. I like the look of that. It's not printed on. It's like pressed in. 
and we've got four rubber feet that hopefully will have a decent stand on my desk which since it's made of glass I'm hoping that it won't slip off this little speck here I don't know what that is <laughs> brand new product all the way already looks weird <laughs> maybe it was something from a table wouldn't be surprised but yeah the Apple MacBook Pro. Can't wait to open that up and use it. And since this is an unbox unboxing video, I think we are pretty much done at this point. I hope you enjoyed this process. I think that a lot of you will probably not be able to afford devices like that um, or at least not often myself I really don't buy expensive things very often only if I really feel that I need them or if I have the money for it in this case I calculated that I do have enough money for this with some moving around of finances so it's still an expense for me I'm not gonna lie um, but since I believe it'll be very interesting you might have heard a truck going across the street outside Maybe that's additional atmospheric ASMR, I don't know. But yeah, what, what I was saying is that um, since I believe that this device will be my uh, companion for the next, God knows, couple of years, maybe five years, I'm hoping for a little bit more. I think the investment is uh, pretty worth it. And uh, compared to my old laptop as well, this will probably make me feel um, like I actually get what I want to make or what I want to do the old laptop didn't really give me that feeling because it was slow it was kind of sluggish the software wasn't really optimized speaking of Windows here right now um, Windows might feel good on a well specced out system like my tower PC but on this laptop that originally shipped with Windows 8 and that um, after like two years had already meh hardware it wasn't too good to begin with it didn't take long until I was like eh, I mean it works for my tasks but best case I would wish for something that's better, which in this case I now own. All right, <coughs> so I think this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. <coughs> My voice is kind of leaving me at this point. It's getting too hot and too dry here. It's basically like a sauna, but without the, um, without the humidity in the air. So. I'll have something to drink right after this video and uh, yeah you should have something to drink too it's good to stay hydrated it's healthy all right let's not drag this on for too long I hope you enjoyed it enjoyed this video and don't forget to leave a comment if you um, have any, anything to say about this video or things that I might have wanted to look up um, yeah I hope you have a nice rest of your day or night or whatever time it is for you right now I'll see you around <laughs>